Can I hear? Amen. I want people to preach with me today. If you sleep, someone told us you should smack. And say, Pastor told me to smack you. And don't be offended. Because the sleep is a smack of the Holy Spirit. Bam. And then all your demons will disappear. And you never sleep in church anymore. Somebody say amen. Today I will speak about elevate a true heart of praise. Can I hear amen? Amen. I would like some choir members to be around me. Some musician to be around me. I know when I will need them. Somebody say amen. Somebody say elevate. Somebody say elevate. A heart of true praise. Now, I say today, the word of today will be a challenging to some of you. Among for you who don't know, among the pillars of divine restoration, we are a church of prayer. Mm -hmm. We are a church of praise and worship. Mm. We are a church of giving. Amen. We are a church of what? Evangelization. We are a church of love and discipline, discipline. in righteousness. That's who we are. So when we pray, we pray. Amen. Somebody say prayer. prayer. We don't try to mm, find out the prayer. We pray. Amen. That's correct. When we praise, we praise. Mm. So among some of the pillars of this ministry, I will speak one is the heart of praise. You to elevate your heart of praise. Praising God. Somebody say amen. Amen. I know praise is involving, actually I found praise and worship is the only thing that involves all the four aspects of God says, love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your soul. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Because when you are singing, your body is involved. When you are singing, your mouth is involved. When you are singing, your strength is involved. Somebody say amen. Now, I know some people, you come and you grow up in the church of your grandma, the church of your grandpa. When they say praise, you only praise. Diplomatically. And you don't move. Because you grow up in a particular location where they told, when you go to church, don't cough. You say, only bless. Don't talk. And some people, when they walk, that is all. Even if they were arguing, hey, I don't argue very They look holy after the service, they continue argument. So they pause it first. Somebody say, be real. Be real. Now today I will challenge everyone that when you praise God, the Bible makes it clear, Proverbs or in Psalm 22, verse 3. Yet you are unthrown. As the Holy One. You are the one Israel praise. Meaning, you are the one human praise. You are the one divine restoration praise. Amen. Can I amen? amen. Let, let, me, let me ask an example. How you praise someone? Example, praise someone. I said, you're going to preach with me. How you praise someone? How do you compliment someone? You are the best. You are the, the best. best. You are reliable. You are trustworthy. You're looking good. You look good. You dress nice. Huh? I like the shoe you're wearing. High uh -huh, nice. Smell nice. Huh? Well done. Keep it up. How do you praise the person? Listen. Will you praise the person? You look nice. <laughs> uh, let me know. How you 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 take that as a praise? Yeah. At all. That's a when the person praises, how do you feel? You feel good. You feel something that beats inside of you. Yeah. Right? You feel uh, you are growing, growing our muscles. Praise in, in elevates you. Yes. Tell your neighbor, you must praise me now. Now, 
Can I hear man? Praise elevates you. Why do you think the some children who are very smart, they may be naughty, they may be confusing, but because they know how to praise their mom and their dad. Praise blinds you. Somebody say amen. They just come, ah, mom, this is the best shoe ever. That's right. You will tell me the car, you drop me the car, I will eat. This daughter did not vacuum the room. Today I'll be very mad at her. The first thing, ma, wow, look at this dress. And you were planning to hear that. Are you going to do it? Amen, amen. Somebody said, praise is a secret. You already can, you already plan today. Well, this man, what you've done, this woman, what you've done, today, today. And you don't just go walk on the door. You say this man, look at my handsome eyes. Look at my beautiful wife. Are you gonna yell on him again? Nah, you melt. Your liver will melt. Brother Aaron said you will melt. Praise somebody say amen. That's why you realize naughty kids. Who knows how to praise? You always, they always confuse you. Because they know if I praise dad, if I praise mom, uh, I know I have my weakness, but my praise is my strength. And they'll come to you, they're hugging you, they're smiling. If you want, mm, later on you end up smiling. Praise is a power. Amen. If you feel that when a human praises you, how do you think the majestic king of kings? Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. Let me say something. I want to say this. The only thing we do as a church to minister to God we don't preach God. We don't do anything to God. There is one thing God cannot do by himself. And that is praise. Amen. The Bible says in heaven, there are millions, a multitude, a multitude. Amen. Their work is simply to praise and worship him. Somebody say amen. amen. There is no actually, all the ministry, the gift we have, they are here. The day Jesus comes, one ministry will stay permanently. And that is the ministry of singing. Somebody say amen. amen. Tell them that better start to learn how to sing. We are going to be singers in heaven. What voice is it? I hear someone. I don't know how to sing. You will sing in heaven. Somebody say amen. Listen, it's illegal for not singing in heaven. Because I, uh, John said, and then I saw. People of every language, every color, multitude, they are there and they are praising. Somebody say amen. amen. As I'm talking now, they are praising him. They've been praising him and they'll be praising him forever. Somebody say amen. amen. So when you have missed the understanding of praise, you are out of the connection of understanding the reason you've been created. Amen. So when you come to church, it's a time of praise. And you are this way. Mm. The lyrics are there. But you decide not to learn. People are moving to the left, to the right. You are just unshakable. It's not true. I want to deliver someone right now here. Somebody say amen. When you don't praise God, you are blocking the blessings over your life. When you don't praise God, we are stopping the favor of God of our life. When you don't praise God, it's not being holy. It's pride spirit. Amen. Can I amen? amen? Some people, they may say, you know, for me, I grew up in a church. You guys, I hear some people, they call you clappy, clappy church. And because they don't read the scriptures. Today, I'll go through the scriptures. You will understand that whatever we do, it is godly biblical. Let me tell you, who knows King David here? Who knows King David here? Who don't know King David? Who don't know King David in the Bible? Let me tell you, King David was the most person who fought a long lasting war than any king in Israel. King David.
envy was the most king who had so many enemies more than Joshua because Joshua was conquering the land but King David was to protect that land you have to know that achieving something is easy but maintaining what you achieve is hard to give birth is one poof baby to maintain that baby is hard to get married like wonderful couple, yeah! But to maintain marriage is hard. So achieving is not a problem. But maintaining your achievement, that is the battle. Somebody say amen. Now King David, in all his work as a king, he had multitude and any enemy enemies all over the place. But if you read the longest book in the Bible, which is Psalm, it is all about seeking. It's all about praising. Amen. Now, I am sitting, I'm, I'm, for when I, sometimes I sit down. What was this king doing? Was he just sitting, composing songs and composing songs, composing songs? He was had less to do with what people want. Yes. He had more to do with feeding God. Amen. And the more he was feeding God, God was leading the nation. The more he was praising God, God was protecting the land. The man was praising God. God was defeating all his enemies. Somebody say praise. When you don't praise, even if how holy you think you are, you will always be a victim of battles and battles. As I finish to say, you may be angry about somebody, but if that person approaches you with praise, your anger melts. Somebody say praise. Now, I just me, let me tell you clear here. I do feel angry. If you never know this before. I do feel angry when I see a believer in the church come to praise and worship. You are like, you're not there. Yes, I understand some of you, you grow up maybe to particular churches where they taught you some stories. But what I'll teach you, I'll teach you today is the word of God. Somebody said the word of God. How you be knowing how to praise the Bible said, I will enter his gate with thanksgiving in. Before you step that door, you must know that I'm entering with thanksgiving in my heart. Somebody say amen. Amen. Now, before you enter, the handle to open the door is thanksgiving in your heart. So you can't enter the house of God. No wonder many believers are having so many depression and concussion because they don't know how to pray. Amen. 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 Praise sets you free. Yes. For information, not just if I think it was when I think it's Mother's Day. I look at some people. Ah, what is this? Are they really in this service? It's like two group of people. Someone is really giving God praise. Others is like, what are they doing here? Look someone in the face say, from today, if I see you don't praise, don't sit close to me. You know that it's a contamination. Have you realized you are dancing and to the left the right one is just look at you. Then you start to feel many of dancing too fast. Later on you do what you slow. You are contaminated with people just unshakable. Tell your neighbor, if you don't praise, if you don't praise, find your seat. Glory. Listen, a church of God, somebody say church of God. A church of God is a church where people come in with the first thing. I will enter his gate with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his court with praise. Somebody say amen. The reason they created God is not behind your two dollars. There was silver and gold belong to Him. You have nothing. Absolutely, you have nothing. Nothing. You're broke. And God doesn't need your two coins to be God. Richard. He is God. Whether you give him or not, whether you offer him or not, whether you give your time or not, whether you give offering or not, he remains God. Somebody say he's God. Lord. God has a need for little stuff. I ask some people, you know, I stopped going to church because they asked me to give. You know, why do you give God? You know, in the 
church and talk to people should give you really do you have something to give God you? Your uncles, your moms, they died and the what you were hiding is remaining home on your back. Amen. That's a fact. You have no idea that wealth is for here. And some people say, when I'll die, give my man to the church. No. It's no longer you giving to the church. You have nothing to do with it. <laughs> Never write a will. The day I will die, take all my money, give to the church. Let me tell you why. Because it's not you who gave. The Bible says, put your treasure in heaven. heaven. Because where your heart is, so where your treasure will be also. You can only transfer your wealth while you are still living. Anybody who say, you know, I died, give the man to the church, no. Because you don't need it anymore. Mm. <laughs> A dead body cannot give. No. Yeah. Never. Never waste your time. You know, he was a good man. He left all the money to the church. Who told you? Because he didn't, even if you put that money in the tomb, it leave with them. You have nothing to do with it. Never bring the money of a dead man here. Let them go with their money dead. Yeah. Giving is your heart. Amen. I'm still breathing. I have decided myself to give him some money. Amen. Better give it to your cows and your cats. God doesn't need the money of the dead. Because it's not money, it's a heart that gives. So that heart already disappears. What is going to give? Glory. Somebody say amen. amen. Now I'm going to touch about areas of praising God. Somebody say amen. amen. Tell me, are you ready? Area number one is dancing. Somebody say dancing. Now, there is two levels of dancing. There are some people who dance during the time of praise to praise themselves. Oh. I'll, I'll give you first red light. <laughs> during the dance, they are not dancing to the Lord. Mm -hmm. They are dancing to let people see how they can dance. Oh. That is a red flag. Chai. Chai. I want to say here clear. Dancing is biblical. Amen. If you grow up in a church where they tell you you don't dance, demonic. Because they will never want people to give God the dance. But there's some people who don't dance in the church. They dance in the nightclub. They dance somewhere to the wedding, to somewhere there. They are very good dance about the wedding of Brother David. <laughs> Everyone who tells you don't dance in the church, I say demonic. Why? They refuse to give God the praise, but they have their close place. When they go in their community, in their mind, mighty stuff, they dance well. Amen. So they will say, don't give this praise to the Creator, give it to me. And others, they don't dance, not because they're giving to God, it's because there is a pride inside of them. I cannot dance. But they have a place where they dance so that people can give them that glory. But they refuse to give it to God. Here are the scriptures. Second Samuel chapter 6, verse 14. Second Samuel 6, 14. And then we go to 15. Remember, we are talking about you praise God through dancing. Hallelujah. Through dancing. That's right. And David danced before the Lord with all his mighty. Somebody say mighty. mighty. And David danced before the Lord with all his might, which means he used his energy. He was not pretending to dance. You know, like some people like us when you dance. No. For David was dancing with his might. Somebody say mighty. Right. You have to know David was a man after God's heart. He's the only one mentioned in the Bible after God's heart. But 
And this man, he never said, David danced before the law, not before people. For me clear. When you stand here and you're dancing, you are not dancing before these people. You are dancing before the law. Somebody say amen. And look at what happened. Wearing a priestly garment, which means evil. I'm reading the living translation. So David and all his people of Israel brought the ark of the Lord. Mm. With what? Please, please continue. 15. While he and all Israel were bringing the ark of the Lord, with what? Shouts. With what? Shouts. Shout of what? And the sound of the trumpet. Do they brought the ark of the Lord as if they are carrying the, the casket of a dead man? No. They were doing what? Shout. Meaning David was dancing and the people were doing what? Shout. Can you shout if you can? Shout. I want to tell you this. I want to show you this. Here David is bringing the ark in the house of God. Listen, I'm talking this because by doing this, you start to fulfill the reason why you were created for. Do not play the quiet as if you are holy. No. You must play. No, no, no. Some of you are very loud. You are very loud. But when you step here, there is a time when you take praise in deep praise. Worship in deep praise. When the time you are told to be silent, it will be silent. But when they tell you dance, it will dance. Amen. Because they are dancing to the Lord. <laughs> this is the king. So who knows the king here? Now listen, the king is not Joe Biden. Joe Biden is a president. They can vote him and vote him next week. No. But the king, you don't vote. The king is just there. When he did, until he die. He is the lesson know how to see. As long as you see the your life, he's a king. Can I amen? Now look at this highly exalted man, King David. Start to dance. Now for you to know that the dancing of David was not a normal dancing, he lost control. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 20 to 22. When David returned home to bless his own family, Michal, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet him. She said, in disgust, how distinguished the king. When David returned home to bless his household, Michael daughter and Saul came out to meet him and said, how the king of Israel has distinguished himself today. Going around half naked, in full view of the slave girls, of his servants, as any vulgar fell would. Here the word because the, the Bible says verse 16, my God looked through the window and he saw the husband. The husband is dancing to the point he forget that he's wearing the priestly garment. He's dancing to the point the cloth is not in order. This man, I don't know what to lose, but he doesn't care. That's my dance. He just takes singing crazy. And then he had the woman look at him. What? Is this, is this my husband? Is this really king? Because why? He grew up seeing his father Saul. There is no way you read the Bible, Saul praised. If you found one Bible verse, send it to me. Then I'll buy your Bible. The one he shows that King Saul dance or King so praise. King so was very more of authoritarian. More of me. More of I. But David was not that way. So his daughter used to see the father, how the father behave, how the father stand, like those dictators, how he acts. And then he was still, she was still in that town, the husband should be. But look at now, verse, continue verse 21. The response. We are still there. 21. David said to Michal, 
It was before the Lord. I was not singing before these self slaves you are talking. It was before the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, it was before the Lord who chose me rather than your father or anyone from his house when he appointed me ruler over the Lord's people Israel. I will celebrate before the Lord. Amen. Which means your talking will not silence me. Amen. It was the Lord who chose me in the place of your father. Therefore, I was dancing for him. Choose how many things the Lord has done for you. How many things the Lord has delivered you from. Tell me the Lord has given you the best praise. Somebody say, praise him. Verse 22. Go to 22. I will become even more and be defied like this. And I will be humiliated in my own eyes. But these slave girls you spoke of, I will be held in honor. You are talking that I'm dancing. I was dancing before the Lord. And your talking will not silence me. And I want to say something for you. When you are dancing before the Lord, before people, not before you yourself. When you know deep in your heart, you are dancing before the Lord. If anybody try to silence you, tell him I'll bring the new move for now. Problem. And God already knows. God unto me and I'll answer you. When you call him, 
He always said this girl, uh, this girl, girl, another one. This cuckoo, another cuckoo. This is the only, only problem. Praise God. Somebody say amen. Now, here, can I amen? Psalm 149, verse 3. Psalm 149, verse 3. Brother Mano, say amen. Let them praise his praise with what? Let's read loud and clear. Let's go. Let them praise his name with dancing and make music to him with tambro and harp. In that time, there's one lady came. She said, I'm going to have a meeting with Pastor Nina. What can I want to talk with her? By talking, talking. She said, Why are you people you are playing music in the church? Where there is music, in the Bible says you should just clap our hands. And I said, are you sure? A grown up mama. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. I did not take it wrong. <laughs> because I assume she came from different the place where they were told you cannot use music to praise God. Yeah. Only clap your hands. I opened the scripture, show me. When she saw, and dancing too? Yeah, it's, it's written. It's, it's part of the package. And tambourine too? Yeah. Part of the package. And music too, say. He said, sorry, I never read this. Oh. Meaning, there was a religion, system, traditional things that they were taught, but not the word of God. The Bible said, let them praise his name with dancing and make music to him with tambourine and harp. Somebody say amen. So every music you see here, they are entitled to praise God. Amen. Can I amen? Amen. So when you don't praise God with dancing, your dancing is missing, your praise is missing something. Praise his name with so if your dancing is not part of your praise, yeah. there is a sugar, that's, there is a salt that's missing in your dish. Yeah. Mm. 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 You have cooked, but you do not put some little, some little stuff. Celery. Can I amen? amen. Praise him with dancing, music, tambourine, amen. and heart. Amen. So if you praise him just by talking, your praise is dry. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. I need some choir members here. I need some musician here. Amen. To give us a dance. Amen. A praise with dance. Amen. And everyone in the room here, I want to see you dancing to give you praise. Amen. Bring it Somebody up. say amen. amen. And you see those who don't dance, they are already your spirit talking to them. Bring it on, bring it on. Somebody say amen. amen. Now when you praise and you dance to the Lord, you are giving a full package. There is a place, there is a music, there is a dance, there is a tambourine. You are giving God what he deserves as a praise. Somebody say amen. amen. Tell them, but don't worry if you don't know how to dance. The anointing of dancing will be on your head right now. Come on. I want the song of that bring the people to dance with the Lord. One, two, three, go. Please, the Lord, I'll tell you the song. When you see me dance, I dance like you in the air. 
studio. Ten songs of praise. Bam, bam, bam. I will praise you. I will praise you. You will praise God. Don't say I will do the car. I finish to say this. Even your naughtiest people around you, when they start to praise you, your anger melts.
And you realize your action becomes very disobedient to God. The scripture said, clap your hands, all you nations. In meaning, everybody who's living in the world, it's says yes, there. All you nations, nations are called to clap their hands to the Lord. Have you seen, I'll give you an example. Have you seen a new military person walks in the room and they tell you, stand up. And you start to clap the hands of people who lies to you. Because they're called politicians who are making some wrong stuff. And then when they walk in, you clap the hands. When you clap the hands, you're not clapping the hands because if they are good or not. You are clapping the hands of them because they are highly authority people. Why not clapping your hands to Jesus? Why not clapping your hands to the king, the king of kings? Somebody say amen. You may listen to Listen. Whenever we fail to praise God, then we lose the reason of existing. We lose the reason of existing. And the things I'm talking here, we do them daily, daily to the human. We praise our kings, we praise our presidents, we praise our mayors. Some of you maybe even put your lapa down so that they may work on them. You do all these yucky things for them. Why not God give you praise? Any spirit that fills you not to praise God, don't say that it is your culture. It's not a culture. It's a bondage that you need to break. Can I amen? amen? The Bible said, clap your hands, all you nation. Yes. So in the nation, there are culture, there are tribes, there are language, there are people. But God said, all nations must clap their hands yes. to Him. Amen. When you look serious, when it's a time to praise God, it's the spirit of pride yes. blocking you. Amen. Can I amen? amen? When you refuse to praise God, it's an evil spirit blocking you. You must learn to give you praise. And I want to tell you, if you maintain these three things normally in your life, you will never be possessed by devil. You will never have stress in your life. I repeat that if you maintain these things in your life, you dance to God, not to yourself. You shout to the Lord, not to yourself. You sing to the Lord, not to yourself. You will never have a stress. Never. Most of stressful people, most of depressed people, if they ask them the first question, what are you thinking? And you follow well, they are lonely. You can't say you are lonely and you have Jesus Christ inside. Somebody say amen. To finish, the power of praise, write this down. To praise, God defend you against your enemies. Ignite God's ability to defend you against your enemies. Psalm chapter 8, verse 2. Through the praise of children and infant, you have established stronghold against your enemies. Which means through praise, I don't know if you hear this thing. Through praise of children and infant, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the fools and the avengers. Your praise itself shush the mouth of your enemies. That's why if you don't know how to say tell your children sing. When the children are singing in your house, they are creating a stronghold to protect you against your enemies. If you start to say, ah, it's too noisy, it's too noisy, you are exposing yourself to your enemies. Because children, they don't seem to show off. They seem to from their heart. Somebody say amen. amen. Psalm 149, verse 9 to 6. You have to know that praise, the power of praise now. You're talking. 49, 149, verse 6. Huh. May the praise of God be in their mouth as what? As a double-edged sword.
So the more you are sinking, the more your enemy is defeated. Do you know the story of Jehoshaphat? Jehoshaphat was found with these people, king of Syria, trying to swallow to destroy. The Bible says, select the singers. The singers went ahead. As they were singing, thanks to the Lord. And then the enemies start to kill themselves. Your praise to God, it always turns into as a weapon, as a knife. The more you praise God, your word, hallelujah, it becomes a bomb to your enemy. You must understand the power of praise. That's why people hate praise. It is written, may the praise of God be in their mouth and the double-edged sword in their hand. How can praise turn into a double-edged sword? Not only from there, verse 7. To do what? To inflict vengeance on the nations and the punishment of the peoples. Your praise itself is a vengeance. The more you praise God, say, oh, I remember what they did to you. Crush them. You praise me, I crush them. Amen. Do you know the story of the war of Jericho Syria? They only turn around. We tell them is uh, the man of God Joshua said, Don't turn around silence. On the seventh day, you just shout. Uh, listen, can I say shout? He said, You're gonna shout, and when you shout, the wall collapse. Do you think the shout can push the wall down? Never. But that shout was the weapon God needed so that when they shout and then the wall fall down. That's why people stay quiet and quiet, quiet. You are not doing these things. You always found yourself out of the box. Jehoshaphat gained victory through sins. Joshua gained victory through shout. Somebody say, Shout for the Lord. The power of praise. There are a lot of scriptures here. True praise and worship is an act to recognize God as a king of all nations. When you are praising God, you recognize He's a king of all the nations. I be surprised to see today people, you still remember those who died. Sometimes you say, let's remember to forget to remember the past and the present who died for us. And you can't, you can't even remember the creator who is in Yahweh forever and ever is there. Someone say amen. Praise is to exalt the name of God. And when you do that, the enemy is trouble. The enemy will to shame. Someone say amen. I'll ask you now to stand up all of us. We're going to have the last praise song. And they're going to forget what you're pressing. You're going to forget how you look like. Forget your maquillage. If you sweat, it doesn't care. You're going to praise God like a crazy person before you leave this room. And I would like the choir to give us right to praise songs. One, two, three. If they don't know who will replace them, we're going to get that off. Hey, my God is good.
of God. You go home and you read them yourself. Psalm 148, Psalm 149, Psalm 150. Go home right after here. Or when you be eating your chicken. Psalm 149, 148, 150. Those three psalms. If you read them, you feel yourself guilty. That you have never been praising God enough. Can I hear you?
we enter in the Holy of Holies. Healing and taking place here is righteous grace. May God bless you.